Okay, hi. We talk about the economics of education. I mean, what can economics bring to education? Yeah, so it's quite an unusual um, topic in a sense, economics of education. People think of economics as spending money and thinking about resources, um, but it's, it's a lot more than that. And economics of education studies uh, how children's achievement is influenced by the resources that they get from their families, from their schools, uh, from the neighbourhood, from their environment. And economists have something to contribute there, trying to understand how those factors influence how well kids do in school. So that's one area in which economics can contribute to, to thinking about you know, how pupils develop. Um, and then there's another area that economics contributes to, which is thinking about the value of the investments that we make, both yeah. as a society, if you like, in, in education as a whole, but also as individuals when we decide to go and do a degree or we, we invest in ourselves, we invest in our own education, then economics has something to contribute there because uh, we can tell you how valuable that investment has been. Um, and, and the third area, I guess, that economics has to contribute is on evaluation. Economists are very good at counting things and working out what works and what doesn't work. So a lot of economists working in the economics of education are actually about um, thinking about what works and, and finding empirical evidence as to what works to make schools better or education more effective. Um, so to pick you up on your second point there on the returns to education, yeah. um, we think about returns perhaps as just wages, you know, the increased wages you get from perhaps getting better qualifications in school. Are there more general returns than that investment? Yeah, that's an interesting question. So. We, but there's an area of economics of education which people call um, rates of return analysis. And, and what that is, is it's a bit like putting money in the bank. It's, it's thinking about if I put some resource in or some investment in, what do I get back? Um, and when it comes to thinking about that in education terms, it's things like when I, when I invest in myself and get a degree, what do I get back in terms of, as you say, like higher wages, um, better job employment prospects. Um, and so much of what economics has done in education has been on, on issues of how much is a degree worth, you know, how much more do you earn as a result of your degree, um, or how, how much more likely you to have a, a good graduate job. But actually if you think about education it goes much broader than that. Um, and so there's a new or newish area of um, economics of education which is looking at the wider benefits um, of education and the wider benefits of learning. And wider benefits might include things like health, if you teach particularly mothers how to read and write, uh, particularly to primary school level, obviously you get benefits in terms of their ability to improve their health and, um, and, and to be able to read things, etc. And then even in, in sort of uh, societies where there are much higher levels of education, we can think about wider benefits and that might include things like um, being more likely to vote yeah, so people who are graduates are more likely to vote. Um, I guess there's a distinction there between the vocational sort of kind of subjects and the academic subjects that people take in terms of the returns and perhaps the value of those um, investments. Yeah, so this is definitely an issue in the UK, isn't it? So where um, uh, traditionally the academic route's been seen as the really desirable route through the system. So everybody, you know, wants to go and get A-levels and go on and get a degree and get a good job. Um, but of course, you know, for more than half um, the cohort, more, more than half of young people go and get vocational qualifications. And um, some of them are, are incredibly valuable. Apprenticeship is really valuable in the labour market. Um, and people that do apprenticeship go on and they have higher wages, they have better employment prospects. But not all vocational qualifications are valuable. Mm -hmm. um, and that's an area of research that um, we have PhD students, as you know, working yeah. here at the Institute on that very issue. The degree is an interesting case because people might not even access university. People might not even be able to get to university in the first place. There's a kind of selection into university, perhaps even before yeah. um, they've gone. That's right. And I mean, so far we've been talking about kind of the value of education as though you just come up and you invest in a degree, like you put money in the bank and you get something back. Um, but of course, education is not like that. To enrol in a degree, you have to have the necessary skills and prior qualifications. Um, and as you rightly point out, not everybody can access university education. So there's another area that economists are working on in the economics of education, that's equity and access to schooling, who achieves well at school, who doesn't. Um, and as you know, there's work by other academics here, like Leon Feinstein, who's done work looking at um, the socioeconomic gap 
you know, the extent to which kids who come from a poor background uh, do much worse in school than kids who come from a, a wealthier background. And that's, again, another topic that's sort of ripe for research. And we have, we have a number of PhD students looking at that as well. How does home background influence academic achievement? So, uh, yeah, so uh, as economists, we would think of home background influencing academic achievement partly in terms of um, the resource that the parent can provide the child. Mm. So an extreme example might be you can afford to um, purchase private schooling for your child and that's obviously a large investment that the adult, uh, that the parent will make in the child um, and you would imagine that that would have a positive impact on the, on the child's achievement. But there are lots of other ways that parents invest in their children. They invest in their time when they invest their time in their children. Um, and so again if you are wealthier and you can afford to have I don't know, more help in the house or um, you know, you can afford to have support if you like, then you're more likely to spend more time with your children. Um, and that again is another way in which your parental background and your family background will mm. influence how well children do in school. But I guess in economics for education we do have quite a general impact on, on policy, I mean, not just perhaps from the theories but also on evaluation as well. Yes, and I mean, for example, recently I think economics of education has had an influence on, on the debate on social mobility. Mm. Um, we've done a lot of work in this area and other economists working in education um, over at you know, LSE and other places have, mm. um, have really started to get to grips with measuring social mobility, thinking about a child's chances, life chances, and how that's related to their family background. Um, so, and that, that kind of literature has had a huge impact on policy as we can see at the moment with lots of emphasis on a, a social mobility strategy to try yeah. and improve things. In terms of policy, um, policy impact and policy evaluations, in the Excellence in Cities studies, I mean, what did you find? Yeah, so that was an interesting one. That was one, uh, Excellence in Cities was a program that was designed to improve achievement in inner city schools. And um, it was a, a program that could be evaluated quantitatively. Mm. And so you know, a team of education economists were, were brought in to do that. And um, what we were trying to look at there is, is not do schools that have the Excellence in Cities program do well or badly, mm. um, but rather uh, what's the impact of that policy. Um, and it's, it's, it turns out to be quite a complicated thing to do because you've got to compare Excellence in City Schools with very, very similar schools. Mm. And Excellence in City Schools were the most disadvantaged in the most disadvantaged areas. So it's really hard to make sure that you're comparing them with a a similar school and to give them a fair chance mm. um, and we did find positive effects not across the board but we found some positive effects from that particular program um, but it was a nice example of, of you need a mixture of skills you need a you need quantitative evaluation skills mm. you need to understand about education and how the program is being implemented and most of all you need a lot of data you need a lot of information on yeah. schools but it seems like that you know makes it, it it's a very interesting area an interesting subject area because sometimes you find out things that surprise you well thanks very much for that and thanks for your time and thanks rob i really enjoyed that